Look, I love a good deviled egg just as much as the next guy or gal. The one major problem I have with deviled eggs is it's just mushy texture. Soft on soft on soft on soft. So today's video aims to remedy that with a deviled egg that has a plethora of textures. Trust me, these are gonna be good. Now let's go! Just grab a pot, eggs, and we're just gonna place 10 eggs into this pot, saving two out of the dozen, saving two for later in the recipe for the breading process. And we just cover these with cold water. Simple as that. Now just onto the stove, medium high heat. And it is said that adding a little half teaspoon of baking soda makes the peeling much easier. I don't know if that's actually true. I haven't really tested it, but I'm gonna do it anyway to cover my butt. Now one thing I've found about boiling eggs is always choose a fresh egg, meaning if you can find a local organic egg that was created by a chicken in your area, generally those are a lot easier to peel. Another thing is we do not want a violent boil here, right? So I have the heat turned up medium high, like I said, but once this comes up a little hotter, I just want a nice kind of medium generous simmer. Otherwise we might break these eggs. This kind of intensity looks good to me. If you need to turn down your heat a little bit, so be it. And when they hit that point, we're gonna set a timer for eight minutes. Have some ice water ready, and when the time has elapsed, just go ahead and gently release those eggs into the water, and we're gonna let these sit for about 12 minutes before we start the peeling process. Now, because these eggs are hard boiled, what you can do is just turning it around, crack it a little, and then just give it a little roll, not pushing hard really at all, just like that. And then here I just have some nice gentle running cold water. And when you're peeling these eggs, the most important thing is you get under that little membrane. There's this little film underneath the shell, between the egg and the shell. And if you get that off, and also I find if you get that bottom piece out first, it makes the whole thing a lot easier. And then I'm just moving my thumb like that and just peeling around. And look, that is easy, easy money. Nicely peeled. Now we just take an egg, pretty easy, right? You just slice it in half, like so. And as you can see, that's just a perfectly boiled egg, even a little tiny bit jelly in the center, but that's nice, very nice. It almost looks like a little fried egg. And now you can obviously just mix this up by hand if you want, but I'm gonna drop it straight into this food processor here because I like a really nice smooth filling and I'm gonna pipe it in. But again, you do not have to do this. You can just mix up the same ingredients by hand. And also when you're working with these eggs here, just keep a damp paper towel so you can clean off your knife. Otherwise, it can tend to really stick a lot. We don't want that. Now in here with the eggs, we go mayonnaise. And with that mayonnaise, I love making my own, but you don't need to do that. But if you're awesome, here's a video right in the corner. Also sour cream going in. I love sour cream and deviled eggs. A mixture of both sour cream and mayo and mustard. Now that's not French's yellow mustard, even though it looks like it. It's actually this Savora mustard, which is like 10 times better than French's American mustard, although it does have its place. But you could use Dijon or whatever other kind of mustard you like. Now just a little salt. And original Sergeant Gilbert reporting for duty. You bad Is that a swear word? I don't know, I'm gonna beep it anyway. That's just black pepper. And remember, there's salt in the mayonnaise as well as the mustard, quite a bit of it, so you don't need too much salt in here. Now we just blend it up for about 45 seconds, or just until really nice and smooth. Now I'll just take my piping bag here. Not that you need to do this, but hey, this is what I like to do. It looks amazing. Piping bags are cheap. This isn't like a, too big of an ask. And I just fitted it with this tip. Not sure what this one's called, but I love the effect I get from that. It's a star tip, but it's got a ton of points. And what we do with this is just flip that out like that, inside out. Bend that tip so it doesn't come out the end, and then just set it in. And then we'll just get our lovely filling in here. And that Savora mustard really helped with the color too, which is awesome. Looks really cool. Scrapey, scrapey. And there we have our nice little filling ready to go. I'm just gonna keep it in there with that tip up so it doesn't spill out. All right, here I have some peanut oil at 300 degrees, which is what we'll also use to fry these eggs. And I'm gonna show you the best garnish of your life. Fried prosciutto, right? Going straight in here. And when you fry prosciutto rather than baking it, you get a much lighter, much crispier finished product. Sometimes baking prosciutto, like you'll see in restaurants between two sheet pans, it's kind of good the day of, but then it gets really, really hard. You can get to like break a tooth level hard. Frying this prosciutto, I'm I'm telling you, I learned this from my buddy Chef Authorized who worked in some of the best restaurants in the world and this is what they do and it is so good. And can you imagine how good this is gonna be with the deviled egg? We are fixing the mushiness, my friends. No more mushy deviled eggs. That's my slogan for this video. That's a key point. When you're cooking, you wanna think about textures. If you can play with textures and have multiple on a plate, not for everything, but I mean, that's always a good bet. And that just needs to cook for about a minute, a little more, maybe a minute and 20 seconds and then just drain it off on some paper towel like so. And when that cools down, is when it'll get really, really crunchy. I mean, how good does that look, right? It is one of the best things ever. Couple more quick garnishes here. We just take a damp paper towel 
fold it quite a few times like that. Got some fresh chives from the garden. I finally don't have to buy them from the stupid store anymore. And here we go. We roll them up firmly, but not too tight. And this makes slicing chives a joy. So nice sharp knife. And we just start at the top and just start working your way down. And they're just nicely held together right now with that paper towel, which is awesome. There's a lot of high level restaurants, Michelin star restaurants. When they hire someone, they'll have them do something like this because they know if they can slice chives really fine, if they can brunoise a shallow, it, then they're a solid hire, meaning a solid cook. And the good news about that is when you get down to where the paper towel is, you unroll and you just move up, right? And then you re-roll, bam, 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 and you can keep slicing. And also storing them in a little Ziploc bag with this around, keeping it on, they'll stay fresh for a really long time. You guys know I worked in restaurants for like 17 years, right? All around the world, more than a dozen kitchens. I don't say it a lot anymore, so I'm just reminding you. And this is probably a good time to bring up like the subscribe and like animations. I don't even think my camera can zoom enough to really see the work on these chives, but they look pretty phenomenal actually. And the last garnish we're gonna do, the dill zip I'm just thinking like pickle, eggs, deviled eggs, yes. And so I'm gonna do these in little squares. I'm just slicing down like so. Then we can take these little planks and slice nicely this way and then turn again, although this is a little sloppy, but it'll be okay. And we'll just slice these into nice little squares like so and just put a little bit of them on top when we're done. And that's just gonna add some more texture and a little bit of acidity. Gonna be really good. Dill pickle is the only pickle for me. So now really simple all-purpose flour, those two eggs we reserved and panko breadcrumbs. And all I'm gonna do is beat these eggs and I'm gonna add some herbs to the panko. This is just thyme and oregano. I just rough chopped it. You obviously don't have to do that. You could just do panko. I just had these herbs in my fridge. I wanted to use them up, so I'm gonna try it out. Now, we'll take some of our egg whites. First into the flour here. Just make sure you tap off the excess flour. Now, next into the egg. Same deal, egg coated eggs. And finally into the panko here, we'll just roll them around. Just be careful not to break these whites, just like that. Now the oil I've turned up to 350 and we're just gonna fry these about five at a time. All those herbs will pop on there. Love that sound. Looks like calamari floating around in there right now. Now I'll fry these for just about two minutes till they're nice and golden brown like so. Make sure you get all that oil out of them and then just drain onto some paper towel. Now we wanna let these cool for about three minutes before we put that egg mixture inside. I am so excited about this. Let's finish building them over here. <laughs> oh boy. We just have a little bit of dill here, some of our chives. Just a little bit of that dill pickle. And of course the crispy prosciutto. Oh my God. One little piece on each. And now we plate them, right? If you want to get uh, technical, always build off the plate and then put it on the plate so it looks really clean and there's not stuff everywhere, as you can see. Woo, those look good. Well, these aren't gonna suck. Does anybody else think it's weird that I'm wearing shorts? I do. That is the best deviled egg in the freaking world. No, oh, I have no words. Usually when I'm cooking for myself, I can't really appreciate it the same way I would when somebody else cooked for me. But with this, every bite was just absolutely divine. Remember to like, subscribe, drop a comment if you so wish, and turn on notifications if you want to be psycho. And until next time, my sweet friends, you know I love you and I'm out.